Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Angela Yee, DJ Envy is out, but we got another light skinned brother in the building to replace him. <laughs> okay, Ro Timmy is here. Hey, hey, my brother. How you doing, my brother? I'm good, man. How's everything with you? How you? You feel good? Like, yeah, okay. I'm in a good place, you know? Okay. I feel like uh, life is coming together. True. Like, you know what I mean? It was a lot of learning and going through and you just said kissing frogs uh -huh. and we made it happen now so I was, telling, wow. yeah, I was telling Ro Timmy the first time I uh, met him early on we had a whole conversation I'll never forget we was in Miami I saw you in the lobby mm -hmm. and then you were asking me about like relationship questions mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, advice and mm -hmm. you know you kissed a lot of frogs and now look oh, at yeah, you yeah. engaged engaged man congrats my thank brother you, thank you so much when's the wedding uh, we planning it now so we're okay. not sure yet yeah, yeah, but where are you gonna sometime. get married we don't know, because her family's from Tanzania. Mm -hmm. So the COVID restriction, we're just trying to figure out where's the best place for everybody. Okay. Yeah. Well, congratulations to you and to Vanessa. That was exciting to see. Yeah. Even you, like, you guys were together for, what, a year and a half mm -hmm. before you proposed? Yeah. And she said she knew you were the one, like, right away. Yeah, yeah, she did a video. She did, um, she did an interview, I think, like, two weeks after we met. And she was just like, no, I found my husband. That's it. I'm good. <laughs> So everybody back home wow. in Tanzania was like, girl, he's, he's going to leave you. He's going to do this. And literally uh, two years later, she posted that video with the engagement video. And wow. it was like, you know, watch. Then I call it, you know, so it was like a like I told y'all moment. Did like, you know that fast, too? Yeah, I did. I did. Because it's the first time I, it, it ever like slowed down for me. Like it was like, I just want to focus on you, you know, tunnel vision on you and make sure everything is good with us. And. I want to grow with you, you know, and like I, I've had a lot of situations where it doesn't add to the busyness. It's another job, you right. know, and this feels like the first time it's like the ultimate compliment. Do you, you know? think the so, pandemic helped, too, because y'all were all y'all both were forced to be still? Yes, bro. We didn't leave the house for eight months. Wow. So we did eight months every single day, 24 hours a day. So our relationship feel like we've been together for about five years. That's wow. how you know you love somebody when you can handle that. Yeah, I mean, you get you get annoyed sometimes, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Course. But like, it's more like, I'm cool. Like, I'm, I am gotta do, I could do this for another 10 years, we straight. Aw. Yeah. And I saw when y'all first met, you was actually supposed to be out with somebody else. Yeah, we gonna see, we can talk about that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can talk about that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it was Essence Weekend. <laughs> And I had like a friend fly in for the weekend to kick it. And she was with me the entire time. But then she was like, you know what? I don't feel like going to this next event. I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling too good. You should just go and I'll meet you at the next one. I was like, yeah, I'll be there for 15 minutes. It's cool. She, you sure? She's like, no, I'm good. I, something in me just doesn't want to go. That's when I met Vanessa. And it was just like, oh, this is just fate. Like, how did this happen? And we just spoke and 15 minutes turned into two years. That's dope. I mean, that's yeah. like when being a player goes right, right? Yes. Because you wouldn't dare <laughs> yeah, even entertain uh, yeah. another woman yeah. now if you was Absolutely. out like that. Absolutely. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. no, no. Never, never, never. So it's like, <laughs> that was the last one of just like, oh, wow, this is how I know this is right. You know, how did you break it to the other girl that didn't make it? Uh, I told her. I said, yo, I met somebody that's really dope. And, you know, and... Yeah, she was like, damn, on. 15 minutes. I was like, yeah, you were fast. <laughs> <laughs> damn, you were fast. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like okay. Uh, I mean, it wasn't intentional. I'm sorry. It was the butterscotch effect, baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you didn't break it to her that weekend, though. I'm sure. No, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. A little bit. I wasn't still sure mm -hmm. how, where this was going to go. But mm -hmm. when I knew that it was getting serious, it was like, all right, you know what? Let me just. But the thing, the cool thing that we did was. Maybe two weeks into it, we both were like, look, I'm going through my phone. I'm deleting everybody. Wow. You going through yours? So she was like, yep, I'm blocking, block. I was like, block, block. So it was just like, that was when I told, you know, the other one that it's over. Yeah. That's got to be tough, though, because, I mean, you know, over the years, man, the past few years, you've become like a... A sex symbol out here in these streets, wrote yeah, Timmy. But I had fun, brother. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I had a good time, my brother. You know what I'm saying? Nothing was lost. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, you did it all. I did it all. You know what I'm saying? You left it all on the court. I get, yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you have to be serious because I'm sure she had plans. She's beautiful, and Thank I'm you. sure she had mm -hmm. a million guys coming yeah, at her. Yeah, so. yeah, you know, and so for us, it was just like our safe place was each other, you know, and so I didn't feel like I lost anything. I didn't know, and and now I can make music that I, I that has a different meaning too, you know, and it also when it's talking about sex and stuff, it's really focused on one person, you right. know what I mean? So like, it's just a elevation that needs to happen when you know when you know and this album definitely sounds like you're in love yeah it's dope man i think that this album is is my like 
my I'm here moment. You know, that's why I call it all or nothing because it's like I'm finally able to just really focus on music for a while. Like this is the first time in my life, bro, like I've always been balancing the two. Mm-hmm. And so the pandemic basically shut down Hollywood for about seven months. Mm-hmm. So I was only able to record. So I built the studio in my house and it was the first time I was able to just really just figure out who I am as an artist, not like going to LA for three days, knowing that the label's saying, oh, you need to make a record. And then fortunately coming out with a love rhythm out of that three days mm-hmm. or two days you got to go. And then fortunately the last song of the night is in my bed. So it's been blessed. I've been blessed, but to be able to literally just flush out every single idea, you know, is a blessing. So like, I feel like it's an even playing field with, you know, other artists that, are, you know, have the time to do that. So mm-hmm. all or nothing is a beautiful record. It's a beautiful project that I feel like people understand like, Oh, he really is him. Like he is. He, there is no box. He is. He is who he is. Yeah, you I still, like that because oh, I feel yeah. like your real life is reflected in this. Yeah. Just because we can see like how public and open you are about how in love you are. Yeah. And then you can listen to the music and be like, okay, he's talking about his girl. Yeah. Like I'm, I have a record called "I Do" that I feel like will be one of, the, if not the the next uh, wedding song for the next twenty five years. Mm-hmm. You know, it's that. yeah. So you know, like. Timeless records. I didn't want to just make bubble gum, you know, and so that's why it took a year and a half to really like do this with like everything I had. Do you still call it Afro beats? I don't because mm. I say that sometimes, and, and and brothers on the continent be like, no, it's more than just Afro beats. It's this style and yeah. that style. So what do you what do you call it? Ah, uh, it's Afro fusion ish. I don't I don't know. I don't know because mm-hmm. it's evolving. You know, like mm-hmm. it's consistently evolving. So especially with me, like I'm the epitome of African. American, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm legit African American. So like, that's why I can dabble into R and B. That's why I can dabble into Afro beat and pop and all this because I'm influenced for both. So I feel like being, I guess, the only one that's in the states that's actually still doing Afro because everybody else is from Nigeria, like mm-hmm. lives in Nigeria, like uh, Wiz Kid, Burner Boy, you know, um, Davido. Davido's back and forth too. But mm-hmm. for us, I feel like we're ba- basically making the bridge that is taking it to the next level. That's does, not just Afrobeat. Does the music bring you closer to the continent? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. You know, because again, like when you're championing a continent that's been put down so long, you know, and now people are embracing it. Now it's 23 and me. Now I'm 17% African, you know, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I knew it was real when Lorenz Tate was like, yo, bro, so yo, I'm like 26% Nigerian, right? So you got to teach me how to make that jollof rice and, oh and that God. okra soup. And, you know, so it was like, oh, like the culture is really embracing where they're from. And it's really, really dope to see. Yeah, I'm 97% West African. Really? Yeah, I'm Sierra Leone, wow. Guinea-Bissau, wow. and uh, uh, what's, this, what's the other country? I always forget the other country, Guinea-Bissau. Cameroon? Senegal. 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 Yep. Have you, are you planning on going? I definitely plan on going. I was going to go last year, but you know. Gotcha, COVID. gotcha. Where yeah. would you go first? Which one would you go? Um, I've been, to, I've been I, want, I want to go see what Senegal yeah. looks like and Sierra Leone. I want to go see it all. I want to yeah, just bro. When, you, travel. You, the thing, the misconception is that, oh, it's poverty. When you have money in Africa, you live. Balling. Oh, what? <laughs> like the houses here, crazy. Like the first thing I did was invest in uh, a property back home. And now already, in, even during COVID, it's already appreciated about 150 grand. Wow. You know, with that. So, like, that's how fast everything is truly, truly building. I got a property in, in Ghana. Smart. Yeah, I got a property in Ghana. But Smart. I love I loved Johannesburg. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I haven't mm-hmm. been to Nigeria. I want to go. But to your point, like, I got, like my homegirl, DJ Cuppy, she's yeah. oh, super crazy out balling. There. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Yeah, she's stupid. <laughs> in, she'll in laugh Nigeria. at our money, bro. Yeah. yeah, she'll laugh at how much, like, her. It's, it's a different type of wealth. And... When you see all of your people that look like you. That's right. What? It's the best feeling in the I world. I remember going to um, Johannesburg and being in the club. And they mm-hmm. were like, oh, that's the prince of such and such. And then he's <laughs> yeah. from here. And I'm like, damn, we're just in the club. And yeah. there's people yes. who are princes in here. That's right. Running yes. around. Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. We, we were sitting, I was, remember sitting outside the Nelson Mandela Mall. Mm. I think that's the name of it. Mm-hmm. And and I'm looking. I'm like, yo, this feels like Beverly Hills. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like we were just sitting out eating brunch. I'm like, it just feels like Beverly Hills. Like yes, the bro. misconceptions we have with the continent are crazy. I, I suggest everyone, if you can't afford it, man, go home. Like go if you if you if you know that you're from home, even if you're not, go back home, wherever country, and just experience it because mm-hmm. it will change the way you view things for sure. Then you were also in coming to America too during yeah. this pandemic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was crazy, you know. Um being around like Eddie Murphy and and Arsenio and like Wesley, it's like they're gifted as artists, but they're dope people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like so, when I first got on set, Arsenio was like, "Yo, everybody, turn around, turn around. Yo, 
Whenever this dude goes, baby, baby, yeah. Whenever this song come on, <laughs> that's my joint. That's my joint. And it was just like, oh, this is this is a different type of love, mm -hmm. you know. And so with Eddie, you learn how to be his aura is like crazy. So you you learn, okay, I'm gonna take that. That's 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 what I need to add to my repertoire. Wesley Snipes, incredibly confident as an actor. So you take the fact that he's just flowing mm -hmm. and, and, and and super, super, super thoughtful and kind as a man. So you take that Arsenio, just Arsenio, you know what I mean? So like I learned in that aspect, mm -hmm. you know, and then it was just more of like, how can I add all of these cool elements to myself? And and just being around them and just having great conversation about longevity and, and investing your bread and, and how to treat people mm -hmm. that was what i took away from coming to america you know it's so interesting with them because i wonder can that even ever be duplicated like you can't <laughs> duplicate it eddie murphy you can't no. duplicate austin your hall of wesley snipes like those were moment in time so even that aura you talk about them having yeah that's years, years. and years and years of legacy <laughs> yeah like i feel like the generations today man we 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 don't we don't we don't a lot of us don't have that and i feel like it's a, it's a lot of factors to it but like that type of understanding of the craft and, mm -hmm. and knowing yourself i think it's lost in this generation for sure i think so now you also have on the new album hitmaker yeah uh feature how many of the songs did he do on here so I hitmaker did two records he did what to do which is my current single mm -hmm. and he did a record that we just actually dropped the video for it called decide so like when i wanted to do something because everybody knows that okay afro b you know i can do that but i wanted to show like oh now nah, like we do it all so what to do was like a big pop summer cool vibe and decide is like the traditional, traditional R and B, like nineties R and B. So just to show, you know, the, the repertoire. I like the song with Bounty Killer. Yeah. Bounty Killer. I yeah. mean I'm sorry, no, oh, I meant to say signal? I'm busy signal, yeah. Yeah, 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 signal. yeah. Yo, that story is crazy. <laughs> that story crazy too. So busy so I started seeing that in my bed was going crazy, um, in Jamaica. But it was not my song. Somebody had remade it, but it was saying they were. It seemed like they were claiming that it was their song. Mm -hmm. So I reached out and it was busy, and I was like, "Yo, bro, like, why are you trying to take my record, bro? Like, what's going on?" Like, he's like, "Nah, bro, I'm just showing love, showing love, showing love." And then in that moment, I was like, "Well, I got another record if you want to." <laughs> <laughs> you really want to show some love? He was showing love, you know. So he sent it back within the next 45 minutes. Wow. And that's yeah, fiction is is crazy. Yeah, yeah. I like hearing both of y'all together on that. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. <laughs> So what's the plan for you, like, moving forward? Be like, what's your situation with the label? So or Empire, so Empire is uh, it's a, it's a partnership, you mm -hmm. know, so they give me so much creative freedom, you know, and so, like, I feel like the independent route is the best way, personally, because you're able to, if you can do it, but, like, if you're able to just trust your process, come out when you want to come out, drop when you want to drop, but, like, being a part of them is that also that added support that really helps, you know? And so when you have somebody, when you have a partnership that really believes in you, like the sky's the limit as an artist, for sure. Is, is it difficult not being a part of the power universe anymore and now to just become a universe? Nah, man, I feel like I was a part of laying down the foundation, mm -hmm. you know? I feel like there would be no universe if it wasn't for what we did. And yeah, that's yeah, how yeah. strong we were because I've never seen a, 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 a show have three, four shows right away that go crazy like yeah, this, yeah. you know? So, like, I play my position, I play my part, and f personally, like, to play Dre for another two, three years, I felt like I would have just completely shrunk the box of knowing what I could do and people understanding, like, oh, it's just not this, mm -hmm. you know? So I think I got out at the right time. Yeah, you people know? were still mad at you. Yeah, like, yeah, they'd be like, yeah. Uh, I like you, Rotin, but I don't like Dre. <laughs> yeah, you know? So That's like, good, though. Oh, I did my job. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm a bad man. You know what I'm saying? I did what I had to do, but it's just too long, too much more of it. I just, it wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been happy, like, mm -hmm. personally. I, I felt like I would have just been stuck in a box. And, again, it's a hell of a box, but, mm -hmm. like, I just felt like, there's always growth. I'm always trying to just grow and mm -hmm. just show everything that I can do. I'm sure 50 got a bunch of other roles in mind for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm spoken. sure y'all got a lot of discussions happening. Yeah, we've spoken. We've spoken mm -hmm. about some things. And, um, yeah, I just I just love the, the creative process. And I feel like, you know, what they're doing over there is crazy. I've never seen somebody have literally four spinoffs at the same time with different characters. I've never seen that before. And that's a testament to what we did. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Do you, do you want to be in more movies? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm I'm starting to write a lot of my own stuff too. You know, um again the pandemic was a good place for me just to just chill and like 
who are you, bro? Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, that moment where you're like, who are you truly, like, at, at every element of yourself, who are you? And I had that. So it was like, let me just try writing. I, I never wrote before, but, like, we wrote a short that, you know, that's, that's about to get funded, you mm-hmm. know? So, like, things like that are just trying to just um, find the right roles that make sense for me. You mm-hmm. know, like, I want to do dope uh, romance, you know, romantic comedies. You know, I want to be a part of like the new, the next notebook, how it affects people. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to do Marvel. Like, so there's a lot of things I still want to do, mm-hmm. but yeah, definitely the music right now and, and, and growing that, you know, is, is definitely priority number one. Did you end up uh, catching up on a lot of series and movies that you've never seen before during this pandemic? Oh yeah, I, I watched um, Money Heist. <laughs> uh, I watched uh, Good Girls. That's 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 V show, so. Yeah, I was like, I figured. Yeah, that was V show. <laughs> um, <laughs> I actually rewatched Entourage. Mm-hmm. You know, I haven't seen that in a while. So there's a lot, but like, just catching up on every movie possible on Netflix and, and Prime, and yeah, just chilling. You, you know, you said something interesting. You said that you know you're trying to figure out. You figured out who you were. Who who are you outside of the music mm-hmm. and the acting though? Like, mm-hmm. who did the pandemic show you you are as a human, a person? <sighs> a homebody, uh, a spiritual warrior. You know, like I was, I was able to really grow in my spirituality. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I I didn't know I loved business this much. You mm. know, I didn't know I loved um, investing money and and finding new things. And I didn't know that um, that I I just I didn't know that I loved my alone time as much because you're surrounded by so many things and so many distractions. I didn't know how good it felt to just be alone for two weeks and just relax and just you know have moments to myself. So. Yeah, just a spiritual warrior that 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 wants to make a lot of money, you mm-hmm. know. <laughs> so yeah. I saw you did that video too. That was like a, a big ass party. Mm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. what, what was it? Um, who was in it? Was Mario in it? Oh, oh, and, what to do video? Yeah, the what to do video. Yeah, and yeah. And Kenny's in it, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so talk to me about that. Was that like the first thing you had really filmed during? Because I know that has mm-hmm. to feel weird because mm-hmm. we've been like you know yeah, on lockdown yeah. and then people are now venturing back out and doing mm-hmm. things in person and filming. No, it felt good. You know, it felt good to recreate you know a party. And mm-hmm. it's been a year and a half since people really kept. Well, I've been in Atlanta. Hey, there, there's oh, no. So you've been yeah, open yeah, yeah, they've been they open. Never they never <laughs> closed. So I'm tripping. But no, but it was cool to like you know just recreate that energy, that vibe. So that what to do video. Um, I'm so happy it's doing super well, and I feel like again just the vibe of that song just fit the pool party element. So Lucky Day was in it. Uh, Mario came by just just to give cameo and kick it and. And then we went, we went to the studio after that and just figured out some, some new music. Now, part of you loving business, I know your manager, Kenny, he has investments in restaurants and yeah. other things. Are you mm-hmm. getting into that too? Absolutely, absolutely. Right now for me, I'm like, I'm, I'm enamored by real estate. So I'm doing that first and then and venture into like a cool little hookah lounges and, and stuff because that's my thing. So yeah, just slowly but surely. You got you got you about to get married, man. You got to have that damn that that horizontal money coming yes. in. That money when you're sleeping. Yes. Horizontal money. Yes. No, real. seriously, for real. You know, even during this pandemic, me and me and V, we uh we wrote a a book, like a, a Swahili 101 book, because I was learning how to do Swahili. So I was like, yo, like let's just let's let's make some bread off of this. Let me let's write the the words that I'm learning and just have 45 words that, if you really want to know Swahili right away, you know, we put it on Amazon and now it's you know, selling so. Now that's dope. Look at yeah. that. A couple that uh, makes money together. Definitely. Oh, yeah, stay together. <laughs> Swahili's a language, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's like it's like Rosetta Stone or something. What do you it's Basically, like? so it's like if it's just like, so she'll she'll say a word. Um, she'll be like mambo, which means you know hello. Mm-hmm. So we'll put those things like that are so simple in everyday words for everybody that wants to learn Swahili. Mm-hmm. So and it's the number one spoken African language. You know, so a lot of people don't know that. So like when tourists go to different places. They ask for Swahili, you know, in, in in Africa. So just to have it in the ecosystem, like, yeah, these are some easy words you can use and talk to people. Like, you might as well make money off of it. Why so, not? Yeah. yeah, I always feel when you go visit some places, it's good to at least know some words to show that you respect that, that, that culture. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's why that's where it came from. And it's been out now. So it's available. Swahili, Swahili 101 on Amazon. So just go get it. What does she think of the album? Because I have, to, I know she has to feel like a lot of these songs are about me. No, nah, she she loves it because she was there the, throughout the whole the process. Right. You know what I mean? Like I recorded over maybe 200 records for this, you know, and so going through every one with her and, you know, how you feel about this? Like she damn near helped EP it. You know what I mean? Wow. So it was one of those things where I felt like, OK, we've exhausted everything and, and she feels the same way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Word. Well, make sure y'all check it out too. There was one um, thing you were talking about where you got to uh, please her first, and she's. Oh yeah. Oh, so yeah. have you always been like that, or is this now what it's like being in love? It, uh, Define always. please first of all. What do you mean oh. sexually or? Yeah, I mean in which, yeah. Which, sexually. Yeah, I think that you got to make experiences, man. Like I think the most important. <laughs> like I'm, I'm, I'm competitive. I want you to leave there being like, God damn, Mr. Butterscotch is the number one lover ever. You <laughs> Mr. know, Mr. Butterscotch. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Just, just, just go with it, brother. You know, just, that's just, 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 just go with it. Just go with it. Just go with it. It's a butterscotch. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, <laughs> so like, I, I'm, that's that's how I view it. Like, I'm, I'm. You're always gonna get yours as a guy, but like, to make to make it about the woman, I think enhances the whole experience. Have you I ever agree. been disappointed in yourself? Like, man, I. I terrible. There's been some drunk nights that be like, come on, dog, what's going on, man? What's, <laughs> what's not you enough do? scotch in the butter. There's not enough scotch in the no, there's, not, there's too much scotch in the butter. There was too much too much whiskey and scotch. Yes. <laughs> in the butters, yes. Did you give yourself that nickname? <laughs> yeah. You yeah. can't do that. Yeah. That's a girl or woman has to call you that. No, so no, so it was a. Uh, right, so it, I, I make these funny videos, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. So I make these funny videos that like I do a face mask on and like so I was remember oh, I've seen those before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was I was I was dating somebody at the time and, and I was like yo she she had given me like a smoothie I had a face mask I was on a high rise and and I was like yo my dad would laugh at me so crazy just seeing what his son is doing right now so I was just like yeah man and it just came out like yo uh, ladies ladies and more ladies it's Mr Sexy Nigerian Butterscotch coming to you to tell you I'm sexy and so it was like, so it was like I was like yo what the hell and and I filmed it and then literally it just went. Viral Mr. right Butterscotch. away, Mr. Butterscotch, baby. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm Mr. Goober. Hey, you know the little chocolate candy, the little peanuts, little chocolate covered peanuts. They do call you that. I'm oh, Mr. Milk Dad, Mr. Milk Dad, <laughs> Mr. Milk Dad, <laughs> Mr. Milk Dad, and Mr. <laughs> Mr. Butterscotch. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh man, bro, Timmy, all yes, or nothing. Sir. Go grab that. Yes, love. Thank do you for coming, my brother. Miss, miss you being single with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they, but they love off. V, though, huh? Got to cut them off. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, yeah. he's not going to cut them yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, they, they love V, so it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> they, probably, you, they probably look at you and they like, well, they got to find me somebody. Oh, yeah, you know so it's, it's motivating for, you know, it's motivating for a lot of my friends because everybody's, at, you know, at the same age. Everybody's kind of at the same place in their life, so they're seeing how dope, you know, we're, we're still having fun with mm -hmm. each other. So they're seeing how that's going, and they're like, yo, that's the goal, bro. Let's go. What's the 1045 mean? The 1045 is a, so, okay, so when, I, the 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 number to our house was 1045 when I built it. Okay. And so we were like, yo, let's let's. What does it mean? Like, what does the number actually mean? What's the number that we're going to be living in mean? Mm -hmm. So it meant infinite love. It means abundance. It means really? um, it means uh, um, um, money, financial freedom. It means um, wealth and legacy. So when we Googled that, it was like, wow. this is what we're living in. So we both just got 1045, just tatted on our... How did you figure that out? Was it numerology or like what? Well, I, I don't... I, I think she she brought it to me. She was like, um, let's just Google what 1045, the meaning, the spiritual, sorry, the spiritual meaning of what 1045 mm -hmm. means. So that's what it was. Wow, yeah. that's dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's it was like... Dope. Yeah, so it was like, okay, cool. That makes sense. And you can't move now. You got to yeah. keep that property forever. <laughs> forever. <laughs> that's where we live forever. Word. <laughs> it's Ro Timmy. It's The Breakfast Club. Thank you for coming, brother. Thank you, brother.